What's up guys and welcome back to another Super Mario Odyssey World Peace tutorial. Today I'm going to be explaining on my recent, quote unquote recent, World Peace tutorial video. In this video, we'll be going over a more advanced route in both Sand and Seaside Kingdom. And just as a little bonus, I'll be going over a tiny little optimization in Wooded Kingdom for you spicy fast nut clip boys. So without wasting any time, let's just get straight into it. So first off is Sand Kingdom, obviously, and this one is pretty similar at first to the Any% Percent route with a little bit of like world peaceness kind of thrown in there. But just as before, the first thing that we're going to want to do is, of course, buy for a spin pound and then just head straight for the chapel moon and of course we are still on a bird timer so making sure we're being extra fast boys and then long jumping off the chapel delaying your cap dive into a spin rainbow spin if you need to to then turn around and grab that moon then we're going to skip the other two moons that we would normally get and head straight for our ice pillar if you want to be fast, you can do a roll cancel to maintain your speed and then pull off some jumps. But if you don't want to do that, you can, of course, just long jump or anything else to stop your movement. Then making our way up to the pillar just as usual. Then what we're going to do is set up for Dram Strat. So this is why this is an advanced route because we rely on Dram to pull this route off. So you want to set that up, do it as normal, and then just get the moon. Once you've done that, you want to head towards this checkpoint, jumping out, diving, and then up throwing straight away once getting the checkpoint to grab that bullet bill again. After that, you'll need to do that bullet build strat that we talked about in the last video. Uh, if you don't, you risk the bullet bill blowing up before you make it over to this pillar. So you need to be a fast bullet bill boy to be a fast Mario boy to grab this moon. Then once you've grabbed that, you want to buffer a spin pound and then head towards the inverted pyramid. This is where we'll be doing inverted pyramid clip so once again just set up and then go through the wall then your movement inside the pyramid is exactly the same as in the last video or you know if you've been doing wall piece for a little bit just as you've always been doing of course making sure to get that bullet bill camera manipulation to not have to slow down at all Then once in this 2D section, we want to be skipping the moon at the end. So just going straight through and then making our way over to Harriet. Once we've defeated Harriet, there's some very specific movement that we need to partake in in Night Sand. And to go through that, I'm going to introduce a world peace world record holder for 1.2 dangers. And he's going to explain all the bullet bill juggling goodness that we need to go through as he's a little bit more seasoned with it than I am. So let's go dangers. All all right, so Night Sand used to be a lot more boring than this, but with the reroute, we do actually end up doing some things in Night Sand. So the first thing we do is we're obviously going to warp back to that checkpoint that we grabbed earlier and grab this first bullet bill, use this bullet bill, and we're gonna do one quick um, boost with the bullet bill into a shake. Now, if we've been talking about this bullet bill strategy before, um, you do know that letting go of the Y button actually does help to kind of preserve your top speed. So the first shake, obviously you're holding Y. The second shake, you're going to let go of Y. That's going to maintain the most optimal speed. Make sure that you do this as quickly as possible. And on that second shake, you're gonna to aim towards the left side of the moon and kind of curve into it. And the reason that you do that is that you can come back and break the block. Now, the way that I do this particular trick, you're going to wanna to break the block from the left side as you approach it. If you approach it forward, if you crash directly into it, then the bullet bill launcher is going to spawn another bullet bill and you're not going to be able to make this in time. So what you need to do is you need to kind of curve around the side. You'll notice I, I can do that here. I will hit the side of the block and you can see the bullet bill peeking out from the launcher over there. Now after you've done that, you're gonna hop across and towards the lower bullet bill launcher. The interesting thing rather about bullet bill launchers is that they only launch within proximity rather than being on camera like a lot of other things in this game you actually have to be within a certain distance of them to make things spawn. So you do notice that the bullet bill launcher on top did indeed spawn a bullet bill. Then you run over to the other one to spawn a second bullet bill. Do a quick little dive back strategy like this to ensure that you capture the first bullet bill, use it to break the cage, and then use the second bullet bill to charge through the moon. Now, all of this of course is very time specific. This whole bullet bill juggling strategy was developed by Neo Yggdrasil, which um, he is an incredible mastermind of rerouting this, this game in general. 
so be sure to check him out as well. All props go to him for this particular strategy. The kind of rework where you're spawning the lower bullet bill a little bit faster, credit for that goes to Suisaiga. He kind of was the mastermind behind optimizing this particular bullet bill juggling strategy. But then, once you've gathered that moon that's in the cage, the bullet bill breakthrough, you do use that second bullet bill to just charge through the sand all the way to the luggage moon. And the cool thing about this strategy is that you can avoid a lot of the mummies and the zombies in the nighttime portion of sand which is part of what makes this particular part hard um, you just bullet bill right over top of them you might crash into some on the dune on the way that's okay you can kind of just break out of your bullet bill and dive over them and charge across the sand and no big issues there but after that you just go right into the hole and you do the the boss fight and that's all there is to it Our other big change is, of course, Seaside Kingdom. So this one is actually a fair bit different from the beginner route. It's not overly complicated, but it does require a few little things that go into it that most beginners would probably be scared off by. So that's why we're kind of recommending this for more seasoned runners. But right off the gate, what we want to do is just roll straight for the Gushin in front of us. And then, of course, roll cancelling to grab the Gushin. And then swimming up to this little platform, jumping out of the Gushin and grabbing the first story moon if you don't get it at the peak of the height you can just wall jump off the wall of course but it is obviously that little bit faster to just jump out of the gushing now if you're a joy con boy after you get this switch you can of course go towards the edge and just down throw but if you're a pro con you're either limited to ground pounding or just jumping off the ledge and grabbing him that way once you've done that you want to swim up and then off the top platform gain some height optimally you want to try and land your gushing on the railing i didn't manage to pull it off in this clip that I grabbed, but it is just that tiny little bit of optimization that will save you a fraction of a second, but is what you're aiming for. But of course, if you don't get it, it's not all that big of an issue as long as you didn't waste too much water as the gushin, swim over the railing, and then down into the water below where we get refilled up and then we're heading towards our friendly fish boy who's just living his life underwater. So once you exit the gushin, hold your ground pound to swim as far down as possible throw Cappy out, shake, and of course, dive into it. Then we'll grab this hidden moon as the fish, swim up and grab Dory as Dory's just right in the way, as always, being our friend. Then swim to the right, swim up, exit the fish and throw Cappy, and the Gushin will basically just be there right for you. And then grab this story moon that's off the lava, just as before. Then after we grab this switch, what we want to do is buffer a spin pound, just as normal, and grab the Gushin over to the left. And then what I like to do is swim towards the Odyssey. I think I went over this in the last video, except it's been uh, fixed a little bit since then. So you'll just swim up, touch the Odyssey to make sure you gain some more height, swim to the right of this platform, and you basically just nudge yourself up straight away. There's no nudging about as the Gushin on the wall, you just get pushed up. Then you'll just grab this last Story Moon, grab the switch, and then fight Mollusk glancer as per usual. So as for Wooded Kingdom, the little bit of optimization that you can do for World Peace here that I'm leaving for this video because it's something that most beginners aren't going to be able to do because it relies on nut clip. Uh, we're going to be doing a trick that's called gate skip. So using the out of bounds movement to skip the gate opening transition, what you can do is set up in your normal nut clip out of bounds movement like so, and then long jump towards the wall. There's a little section in the wall where you can just kind of slip through and and then cat throw towards solid ground again, and then make it back up, and then head straight for the nut moon as you normally would. This strat saves about seven-ish seconds when done properly, so it's definitely something to go for if you can already do nut clip. But of course, if you're not a nut clip boy, then it's probably not worth going for because you're just wasting time setting up nut clip. And if you're wasting time in out of bounds movement, then it's probably just faster for you to just grab the gate and go ham. So that's all there is to the new 
more advanced routes with World Peace. Um, this category is still one that's really fun. I go back to it every now and then. I highly recommend it. So if you're a semi-fast to a fast boy, I recommend you push these into your route and ignore my last tutorial. And yeah, I hope I've been informative and helpful. And I hope this is something that you can implement yourself in the near future. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.